Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Effects Maniac. This is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri and welcome to another really cool tutorial and I know it's been ages since my last tutorial but uh, I do apologize. I've been quite busy with some personal projects and I will promise to be more consistent after this. So in this tutorial today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this uh, portal effect uh, and this is not a After Effects tutorial. It is actually done in Maya, so I'm going to show you how to do this effect in Maya. A portal effect, kind of like the Doctor, uh, Doctor Strange portal effect. Uh, so we'll see, we'll go into Maya. I'm using Maya 2018 right now. And uh, this is the Maya particle scene, so if I just play this for you, you can see that, uh, you know, we've created this using N particles. Very simple effect, very simple setup. So we'll just get started with this. So I'm going to create a new scene. Uh, don't save this. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm actually assuming that you know the basics of Maya, uh, the basic uh, like interface and how to navigate. Basically, if you don't, if you hold down alt and lift mouse click, you can rotate around and alt middle mouse click, you can just uh, pan and middle mouse click will zoom in and zoom out. So I'm going to hit F to center the scene. And what I'll do is first I'll create a curves circle and I'm going to hit R to scale it. So we'll scale it up this much and I'm going to select this and I'll go to the rotation and rotation X in this case I want or I can hit E and rotate it like 90 degrees or minus 90. It doesn't matter. And we'll bring it up, hit W for the move tool and move it in the Y axis so that it's like this so now I'll, I just want to emit particles from this uh, uh, this circle so what I what I should do is I should go to this uh, effects tab here and I'm gonna go to end particles and emit from object basically I want to emit particles from this object so I'm gonna create on this little box here for the settings and I'm gonna name this like uh, portal and I'll go to the curve the emitter type and I'll set it to curve because this is a curve so I'll set it to curve. The amount of particles we can change later, but for now I'll like set it to like 5,000. And the rest is fine. We're going to hit create. And now if I play this, you can see that the particles are emitting from this curve, but they're moving down. And uh, a couple of things we need to change. First thing, we want to decrease the gravity. So uh, in order to change the gravity, we have to go to the nucleus and hit control A to go to the attributes editor and I'm going to change the gravity to, it's a 9.8 I'm going to change it to maybe 2 so that there is not much of a gravity and we'll uh, go to this uh, nerve circle you can see that there's a plus icon and I'm going to click there and click on this portal effect this uh, portal like emitter and I'll change the speed to maybe 0.3 because I don't want them to move too fast just like this and I want them to collide with the ground also so what you can do you can either create a, uh, a plane uh, shift right click and plane and hit R and scale it up and set this as a end cloth passive collider which will make it as a, uh, colli a collision object but the problem with this is that this this uh, curve is you know is colliding with it in a very weird way so what we can do is uh, we don't need this or even if it's there it's no problem we can just go to the nucleus and uh, turn on this use plane in the ground plane option here and turn on the use plane and now as you can see it's basically colliding with the ground but the thing is this thing needs to be a bit up from the ground so that we can see the motion properly yeah so now in order to give it this sort of uh, random sort of swirly and uh, kind of like turbulence motion, what we have to do is we have to uh, select this end particle and I'm going to go to the fields and solvers and I'm going to add this turbulence and click on it. So now if I go back to the first frame and plate, you can see that we're, uh, we get this really cool sort of swirly and really awesome motion of these particles and it's only 120 frames so I'm gonna make it like 500 frames so that we can see properly and I'm gonna extend this to the end 
So now if I play this, you can see that we have this really cool, amazing sort of particle motion here, but the couple of things I want to change, I don't want them to last forever because it's just gonna make the system a lot more heavy and a lot more calculation will be needed. So what we can do is just go to the end particle and I'm gonna go to the lifespan and here is the lifespan mode which is live forever. We don't want them to live forever, I just want them to be constant but I want them to be random also, not like they, they shouldn't all die at the same time. So random range and lifespan is one. One basically means one second which is 24 frames here as you can see and the randomness I'll also set this to one. So now if I play this, go back you can see that they're dying too soon now so I'm gonna change this to like three and I'll go back we'll see now I think it's fine and the number of particles if you want to increase them you can just go to the emitter and here is the rate so I'm gonna change them to like 15,000 uh, now if I go back and hit play again you can see that now we have a lot more particles and uh, the thing about this turbulence field is that if you, the name is kind of weird, so I can just right click or just double click on it, make it turbulence, and you can decrease the attenuation to make the scale of them very small. So now you can you get this really random sort of sporadic particles, but we don't want that much. So I'm just going to change it to like 7.5 or point. 7.5 I should say and now we get, we're getting this really cool particle effect and uh, the other thing that you can experiment with is uh, select this end particle and go and add a another vortex field which this is gonna make it like rotate also at the same time so it's kind of it's kind of cool to be able to you know kind of experiment and I let you guys do it uh, but for now we're just gonna go ahead and uh, this this thing is okay for now so I'm just gonna go to the turbulence and make it like 0.85 because I don't want it to be that much crazy this one is fine and now is the time to render this using Arnold so uh, what I need to do first is I need to create a plane so I'm just gonna shift right click and plane and I'm gonna hit R and scale it up like this much and I'm just gonna right click on this and assign favorite material Lambert and I'm gonna I'm just gonna make it dark because I don't want it to be too reactive to the lighting and the next thing that we have to do is we have to go to Arnold lights and I'm gonna create an aerial light and as you can see if I hit 7 the light is here and I can scale it up and move it so you can see it's there but it's not that bright so what I can do is I can just increase the brightness or the intensity I'm gonna change the color to be kind of orangish color like this towards orange and uh, yeah it's here and I'm gonna control D this one this light and move it up so this should be for the back of the particles if you can see here like this area is so bright and the ground is a bit bright so uh, the ground light I'm gonna select it uh, this one and I'm gonna hit E to rotate it I'm just gonna rotate it flat like 90 degrees if I go here it's a minus 90 and I'm gonna increase its exposure to like 5 and if I want to see it right now I can just go to the Arnold render view and preview this First off, you can see that the particles are barely visible because they're not, they're too small. So what I can do is I can just select the particles. I can go down, I can go into this end particle shape. There's an Arnold tab and I want the minimum particle radius to be 0 0.03. You can go up 0 0.05 or 0 0.3 if you really want them to be big, but 0 0.03 is fine for now. And I'm going to select this other light, the light number two, and I'm going to increase the exposure also so we can see the particles properly. So now, as you can see, the particles are visible. I can just zoom out and we'll see here. I'm going to close this once. And if I want to show the render frame, I can just click here so that it shows me the exact frame of render. 
and like this and I just want to go and see another preview and yeah it's kind of like this so it's good and now I can just go and uh, change a few more things maybe I want this light to be a bit more brighter so I'm just gonna select this light and make maybe make it 8 so it's a bit more brighter and the second one also maybe like 7 and maybe I want the particles to be a bit more bigger so I just go here and uh, select this to be like 0 0.06 now they're quite big I don't want them to be that much 0 0.04 I guess that's okay and uh, the more you want this effect to look cooler the, the more you have to increase the number of particles so if I go to like this I'll change it. The original, this one, this example that I've done, uh, I have 40,000 particles per second. So I can just go here and maybe change it to like 40,000. And if I go back and play this, you can see now there's a lot more particles and like it is going to take a bit of time. But if I go to the render view, I can just preview this. You can see now we have a lot more particles and it's looking a lot more better. And the other thing is that uh, I can just zoom out a bit, maybe like this much. And I can change the color of the particles to maybe if I go to the shading and here's the color. So I'm just going to add another color. Maybe I just want them to be like orangish like this and kind of a different shade of orange. So a bit more like vibrant and dark a bit maybe like this much and I can change them to random ID and maybe this one is a bit too orange so I can just take it towards white a bit and maybe this one too and I'll take it towards more of a white color and maybe a bit darker or maybe this is fine so now if I render this you can see now they're looking a bit more better and it it kind of gives it a really cool sort of you know the shading and all it, it looks really cool so i can just take this second light and i can increase the amount to maybe 10 so that the particles are more bright on that spot and yeah that is basically the effect so uh now this is only the preview if i just click on render this will be a different image uh, like it will render it out and you can see that the quality is not that good and uh, I can just uh, the quality is not that good so what, what I can do to increase it I can do two things I can go to the light and I can change the the uh, samples to three and this one also which will increase the shadow samples and I also can go to the render settings and the Arnold renderer and I can just change this camera AA24 and the diffuse to 3 and I can just take another render so click render so now you can see this image is looking really cool and the time is also not that much 12 seconds for a frame and uh, you can still increase the number of samples but I think it looks already pretty cool and you can just do some basic adjustments here to just see how it looks I mean some basic it's not even for final just to check it and uh, yeah just increase the samples and the Arnold samples and uh, like render it out and once you come into After Effects I can just go and take this uh, this is the portal render I've did like 300 frames and I'm gonna drop it into a new comp and you can see that this is the render that we've got and I can just uh, add some effects and I've added a camera motion also I can just add some effects to enhance it a bit more so I'll go to color correction and maybe give it a bit of uh, contrast this much and I'll increase the red and decrease the blue so it looks kind of like that and it all depends on your choices of course but this is how I want it to be and I'll just add a new adjustment layer and I want to add a glow effect. So effect, stylize and glow. I'll just increase this to maybe this much. And uh, 
we haven't added motion blur in Maya, but if you want, you can see in this that I've added some motion blur. I have used this uh, plugin called Revision FX. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Real Smart Motion Blur. So I can just go to this, create another uh, adjustment layer, and I'll go to Effect, Revision Effects, Real Smart Motion Blur Pro. So what it does is, uh, I have to put it before the glow, of course. It, it it just gives it motion blur and it, it it gives it a very realistic way so it's really cool you don't have to render with motion blur and uh, you can add motion blur with this plugin and uh, the other thing is maybe now it's a bit too saturated so I can just add another adjustment layer and go to effect color correction tint and go maybe like 30 percent and yeah now it's looking really cool so this is the effect that we've created today and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, any problems, make sure to share them in the comments. And I know this was the first Maya tutorial and I had to continue the After Effects tutorial series also. I'm sorry about that again. I'll try to be more consistent after this. But in the meantime, if you haven't checked the other tutorials out, make sure to check them. And any questions, any problems you might be having, I'm here. Just put them in the comment section and I'll be more than glad to answer them. Until the next tutorial, enjoy working.